All right, so let's dive into our jobs controller, getting that taken care of. We've got pretty much everything in the database we need for the job. We might need one more or two more columns. We'll get to that when we kind of start integrating things. So let's go to jobs controller. And I wanna kind of set up devise to be our friend. So before action here, we will authenticate the user. Uh, we'll do it ex basically every action below except index and show. And let's see, we'll come back to the index because we're going to want to filter the jobs later. But for now, we'll just order them created at and descending. Cool. And with the vise, we want to kind of pass the current user through. So we just do current user dot jobs dot build. And the same is true here. And we'll come back here definitely doing some Stripe handiwork. But for now, we'll just leave that. Let's see, we need to pass in our permitted parameters here. We've got most, uh, but we're, we added a few more columns. So we want to add avatar. And I think that's it. Yep. So we'll go with that. And you need it. Basically, these are important because you need to pass those through. Otherwise, Rails will tell the database to just ignore them, more or less. Uh, you can't just save things that aren't permitted. So that's this whole point of this. This came about in Rails 4. So that was something that was new and improved. Okay, so with that done, we can go back and start getting into the views a little bit. I'm going to start with the layout. And the layout we have by default comes with uh, Font Awesome installed. That's for Bulma. Uh, we're going to add a few more things in this one that's going to be specific to Stripe. Um, I'm actually going to copy and paste this because I don't want to mess it up. And it's going to be an include tag from Stripe. And then also a tag. We actually create a tag for the Stripe public key. So this is going and getting Stripe, going and getting Stripe version two, version three, and then also our basic application. You can comma separate what JavaScripts to include here if you need certain ones, just kind of save some space. And then with Rails, you can create tags on hand. So this is a tag, and it's a meta, meta tag. We're giving it a custom name of Stripe public key. And the content is our environment variable that I showed you how I set up in the very first video. So we can actually start including that in this file. So I have Figaro installed in our gem file. No, I don't, I need to install that. So let's install that, sorry, I missed it. So let's go to the Figaro gem, use it as is like this. And we'll go back to our app, put that at the bottom and then run rails or just bundle. Okay. And then with that installed, you can run this easy one liner bundle exec Figaro install and it creates a couple files or actually creates one file and appends this file to git ignore, which is what we want. We don't want this to save to our version control because it has basically passwords. And then at this point, you're going to want to go and create a Stripe account. If you haven't, you're going to need it if you're going to follow along. But what I'm looking at right now is the API, API key section. Uh, you're going to have a publishable key and a secret key. You need both of those to get started. And we're going to go ahead and create those in this Figaro gem in, in the application YAML file. So we'll go to that and then make these look all nice and neat. So by default, there's stuff in this file when it gets generated. I just copy and paste this one and then create one called development. And then uncomment it. You need to find the API key. These are these are live keys, so we're not going to actually use these, of course. But we need to use 
our own. So we go and find those. The secret key is the, the one you, the one they're calling API key. And the public school key is the kind of the public one. So I'll add API or publishable there. And then API there. Okay, so you can set this in any which way. It's uh, and typically a lot of people use all caps here up to you if you want to do that. It's just kind of a constant convention to go by. On top of that, we have our Stripe gem installed. And then one key thing to remember for the Stripe gem is it needs an initializer. And an initializer kind of runs every time the app starts up or runs. And it's just something that's kind of first. It happens first. So to initialize, we need to set our environment keys for Stripe. And so we can create a stripe.rb file. We'll actually go to our demo project and config and initializers stripe. And you're gonna want, you're gonna want keys that look like this, kind of sets up the configuration. So I'll go back to my project, uh, the, the real one. There we go. And in this file, you want this. These keys need to match what we put in our Figaro file. So this this is looking, the environment here is looking at this file right now. So our API key, we need to copy this over and that'll be actually our secret key here. Same here. And then a publishable key is the way this one's named. So why do we do this? Version control. Basically any integration is gonna have some sort of key or password to pass through and you don't wanna have it in version control. So this is our way of, of doing that but still having the code just literally pick, copy and paste it in, you know? So that's how that's gonna work. Okay, so with that set up, you can come back to your view and actually access that environment variable. And in our case, some sometimes you might see Rails or like a Rails environment secrets, whatever. Uh, in our case, since we're using the Figaro gem, we can do it this way. So Figaro environment stripe publishable key. So that's pointing way back down to where we were. Stripe publishable key, which is what we want. That's the cool one to set public. Okay, and then aside from that, we have basically this stuff I've had in previous projects. One new thing is this Rails configuration application name. That's just a handy way for me to output what it is you title your app when you, you run that template. So that's something to think about. You can change that anytime if you want to. Other than that, we have devise basic stuff. Our application file is gonna have a few new things like a new job, post job. So I'll actually add that now. And it's gonna be public facing too. So it's okay if the user isn't signed in to see it. So we'll just add a P tag, the class of control. And then we'll link to post job. New job path. And this is a RESTful route that was generated when we created the scaffold and you'll notice in our config routes file that gets generated automatically using this resources app. So that's pretty cool. And you'll see devices here, our root path is here. And then our you can actually have a require sidekick web for our sidekick gem, which we actually aren't using in this series, but it's just something to kind of have on hand. Uh, so this one's going to have navbar item button is primary and then is rounded. Cool. So I believe that's it. Um, yeah, not that though. So then on the front end, we should see Initialize constant action view compiled templates Figaro. I think I might need to restart my server. Any error that says it just can't find something is typically because it's your server just needs to be a little refresh. Yeah, there we go. 
So now I can post a job. It's going to go to, oh, I'm, I mistyped that. You probably were yelling at your screen when you saw it, right? Uh, so on job should be belongs. Unknown attribute user ID. Okay, so I need to add user ID to a job still. I knew I forgot one. So let's do that real quick. With another migration, generate migration, add user ID to shit. Didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna go back and delete that. Since we didn't run Rails DB migrate yet, we can actually delete these migrations and they just kind of don't exist after that. So I'm gonna delete that one because I misspelled it. And do that again. Rails generate migration. Add user ID to jobs. And then user ID will be an integer. There we go. All right, so this should fix that. And then we have this ugly looking form, but it is there, so that's great. Yeah, we need to clean this form up for sure. If I were to log out, you'll see the sign in, sign up links, and then we still need to configure our a root path to actually be the jobs index path. So I can do that real quick, actually. Going into our config routes and you can just do root to jobs that index. And I don't think I'll need to, yeah, I don't think I'll need to create or restart server. So with that done, we should be able to kind of move into the views next and start configuring things and making them look a lot better. So I'll see you in the very next video to do just that.